R&B, hip hop, pop, I still get reggae, EDM, indie, old school, side, side. <laughs> Check it. and sports talk. Right. Hey, you guys, it's your girls. Let's get personal with LaTanya and Ray. Powered by World Star Hit Radio and Celebrity Media TV. Hey, hey. everybody. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Look who That's we have true. here. We've been waiting and waiting. It's been a while. Yes. He's been in New York, so, mm-hmm. you know, we had to hit him up. What's up with the interview? <laughs> Before he got to Atlanta. <laughs> so we have who? Definitely, Sean McDay is on the check-in. Oh, M? I'm a day. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, it, it depends. It, people, that, people that know me personally, they call me Inf, because I actually go by Inf. Oh, but I like to the masses, name. they call me I'm a day. It's like, if you don't know so me, uh, the reason why I don't really say my name is I'm a day is because there is a producer named I'm a day is that mm-hmm. he's been signed a bad boy for many years. Mm-hmm. And it, it causes it causes a lot of confusion. Yeah. But I've been realizing that recently, like I have to start really introduce myself as both because if if you know the name and you meet me, you won't know that it's one and the same. It's like it's <laughs> weird. You got like two names it's going right. on. They're like that Shay Forty Five Amadeus, and then when they see my Instagram and it has Amadeus, oh yeah, Amadeus. No, I'll introduce myself. <laughs> So use the whole thing. I gotta use the whole thing from now on. Wow, wow. Well, welcome to Atlanta. I love Atlanta. Yes. I love Atlanta. And he show it too. Yeah. He be out here supporting, just doing yeah. his thing. Oh my gosh. This is, this is my fourth time in Atlanta this year. Wow. Um, I've, I've been coming to Atlanta roughly for about seven years. Oh, dang. Um, the very first time I came to Atlanta, I shot a video for Bone Crusher. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is when I was uh, a film director. And, okay. um, and from the outside looking in, I've seen how much Atlanta has developed okay. in the seven years wow. that I've been coming down. I mean, it's really developed and it's modern and it's trendy and it's, wow. the hospitality is amazing. So I, and the weather is great. So I do enjoy coming <laughs> down here. <laughs> so coming to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Yes, pretty soon maybe you can get a condo down here. You well, know? That, that's on mm-hmm. the plan. That's uh, looking. <laughs> <Good> looking. <laughs> as much as your hair. Uh, I mean, because you're doing big things out here. I mean, yeah. you're here this week for the A3C. Yes. Mm-hmm. You have that going on. But before we get into that, let's take it back to who you are. Yes, yes. Back, yes. back. Like, like let's oh, take it back. Oh, my God. Yes. Like, how back you want to go? Because it's, it's a long story. Like, people just see this whole thing that I'm doing now, but mm-hmm. they don't know the whole process of when I was casting music mm-hmm. videos. Uh, originally, I started out as an artist. Um just like every other artist, I found myself in a position where I was surrounded by a bunch of people that can only do one thing and that's rap. Mm. Um, And early on as an artist, I realized that no machine moves on light parts. So for example, like a car just doesn't run on only tires. You got a steering wheel, you got this, you got that, you got Mm -hmm. gas, you got sensors. So um, I chose to not make music the forefront and um, go behind the scenes. And I started with casting music videos and that led me to directing um, I've been blessed to shoot many artists from Fetty Wap to Project Pad to Jim Jones, Ice T, Pat Poose. Like my, my resume is uh, is uh, extensive. And then um, I got the chance to go on National Geographic, which uh, I mean, you guys—I don't know if you guys are familiar with a Nutcracker. It's a, it's like a street drink that we have in New York. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's pretty much. Um, we got the idea from this restaurant named Flor de Mayo in Harlem and pretty much you would go to Flor de Mayo and they would allow you to take the drink outside. Oh, so okay. so the streets would just, you know, mimic the drink and mm-hmm. National Geographic called one of it and they profiled me in a mm-hmm. show called Underworld Inc. And then that's how I got the serious accept because they saw me on National Geographic. Okay. Um, wow. Hence the drunk mix. So uh, the guy that I work with, Lord Sear, his whole theme is the drunk mix. Mm-hmm. And you have a guy selling liquor on TV and then mm-hmm. here I am. So wow. Um, so Damn. what's in the Nutcracker? What's um, mixed in it? It depends how you do it. It's, it's usually like vodka and like um, like rum and uh, flavors. Some people like the <laughs> some people like to put fruit in it. But I okay. mean, the like a moonshine is, a little bit. Well, kind of thing. Yeah, it would be like an urban moonshine. Mm, nice. And, and it's funny you say that because that's what the National Geographic show was about. It was about mm. moonshine in the South and then how it migrated to New York, and then basically our version of it. Okay. And you know, 
So you were drinking that moonshine, wasn't you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you had to test the product. I can't drink it anymore. Like once I've converted to Hennessy, it's just been about Hennessy. It gives me heartburn. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> real, I'm serious. Like, I can't drink it anymore. It's done. <laughs> he says done. Oh my goodness. So what are you? What are some of the things that you got um, coming up that you're really proud of yourself? I mean, right now, um, the main thing that I'm doing is, uh, you know, see a serious cipher, which is on Shade Forty Five on. Mm -hmm. um, on Tuesdays, I mean on, on Wednesdays at two o'clock. Um, it's a site for where I basically mm -hmm. scavenge the country for the most elite MCs, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'll put them on the radio. Oh, Every, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's no secret that many things can be bought in life. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't have to play games and act like we you know. But this is something mm -hmm. that can never be bought. It's strictly based on talent. Wow. Bottom line, the nice. dopest MCs. This is what I've been doing. When you see me going to Nebraska and you see me going to Maine and even here in Atlanta, this is what I'm looking for. Really? And, and the foundation of this becomes in New York. You know what I mean? So, you know, I, I have a showcase we do in New York. It's free. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we basically put a kid on the radio every two weeks. Um, and, and when I first started my showcase, um, I would say out of 30 acts, maybe 97% was doing trap music. But now that they see that they can actually... That they're being rewarded for using their fucking brain, excuse me, their brain, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Honestly, for, yeah. for not being afraid to have content and show that they're mm -hmm. capable of formulating a paragraph that makes sense. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Now it's kind of like the opposite. So now my showcase is like 27 acts, everybody with content. They leave nice. the showcase, because wow. you go into a showcase mm -hmm. and, you know, you, you don't get nothing. But they see kids that's in the crowd with them going to the radio. Mm -hmm. It's like, all right, I want to do this. So now they're determined. They go back they home. Go. They start writing rhymes. Mm -hmm. And now it's just yep. becoming yes. a thing that's just catapulting mm -hmm. yeah. down. That's good. Um, and and it's, it's working. So you are you making know. a difference. Yeah, yeah. that is. Goal, they, yeah. they got something to look forward to, you yeah. know? Yeah, that, that, that's, wow. the goal. that's the goal. Wow. Sure. Nobody's doing that. Yeah. Nobody's doing that. Nah. Nobody, no, I mean, people care. Mm -hmm. I won't say that people don't care, but nobody's taking the time. Y'all taking yes. the time to do that. Yeah. yeah, you know, you have these shows, then you're putting them on the radio. Yeah. You know, everybody wants a dollar. Yeah. That's what's that's what's going on yeah, right it's, now. It's yeah. it's not about that. It's it's more about the cultural change. Yes. Um, these kids are actually more socially aware than than ever before in life. They are. Um, I mean, we're all older, you know, so yeah. we understand how fast information travels nowadays. And it's just kind of about, I, I think the message gets lost because they get confused about what they hear on FM radio, mm -hmm. you know, and, and not realizing that, you know, it, this, this business will always be content driven because the consumer wants to know you without ever meeting you. So if your music only displays one emotion, you're not gonna sell records. Oh, that's the truth. You heard it. And this is and this is the general problem. This is why, you know, a prime example is DJ Khaled spends five million dollars on an album. He debuts number two, but here comes Tyler the Creator with no radio record, no nothing. He's number one. He beats DJ Khaled. How is that possible? Dang. <laughs> You gotta make a difference. You gotta stand out. You can't follow yeah. what everybody you remember, else is doing. Um, um, Amadez was saying that before when we talked to him. He gets into different um, genres of music. So that's what I like when you said you do different kind. You like to put in, you know, because talent kind is of music. talent. I mean, talent, talent is talent. Talent, talent is talent. You know, at at, uh, at, at the Shape Forty Five platform, I mean, mm -hmm. we're we're blessed because we get to kind of play what we want. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But our fan base, core fan base, is based on the lyricists. Mm, so okay. they want to hear the lyricists, but that don't mean that, you know, I won't bust out a dembo set or get in the soca <laughs> or kind of do that. When, when you're on oh, FM, wow. you have these limitations. It's like you walk into a room and you got Tory Lanez, Baby, Megan Thee Stallion, and you have to play every record on their album for a whole hour, and then it just consistently recycles itself. Mm -hmm. There's more of a leeway um, to explore the different types of um, versions of hip-hop. Wow, wow. Tell so us a little bit about Get Adam. Well, Get Adam is Get Adam is my company. Um, I get out of media group. Um, and we we've had throughout my career different division. We had Get Adam Girls, which was my model agency. Mm -hmm. Um we I had girls in fifty cent and two chains and just Kanye and everybody's mm -hmm. video. Mm -hmm. Then Get Adam Films, which was the film company and Get Adam has kinda just been in the background now, but the label is about to be the next thing. 
Because um, wow. I was just kind of focusing okay. on my brand and, and what works um, at the moment. So, so we wow. can look forward to a label coming? <laughs> yeah, that's what that label. sounds yeah. like to me. He's been working, y'all. Yeah, He's been hustling. I label, love it. Grinding. It's is, is happening wow. now. So um, it's just about um, setting the foundation mm -hmm. and also setting the expectation when, when you listen to the Get Adam Sound, what they're going to get. Yeah. Mm. Wow. I'm loving this. Oh my gosh. It's so, exciting. Yeah, I know, I know. I know he's gonna have it on lock. I know it's gonna be real nice. So what are some of um your favorite um artists that you have worked with this this far? Um my fa I, I my favorite artist I've worked with is probably Papoose. Mm, okay. Um, I hear that name he, a lot. He was he was the person that gave me my first ever film credit. Mm -hmm. Um when when he kinda didn't have to. Cause I was oh. I was editing a lot of these videos before I was actually getting credit, mm -hmm. so I was doing the film work and I was editing and I had in one year like forty seven videos on Top Box and World Star, just wow. just the work I've done with Young Money wow. and just um uh, just in the film editing aspect. So I would say like Pat Pools would be the f the best mm -hmm. person mm -hmm. that I worked with. There's been some other people that I haven't enjoyed working with. Um, wow. I think a lot of it comes with just from the fan perspective, mm -hmm. again, mm -hmm. the relate the relation to your artist. You feel like you know your artist without ever meeting them, and then when you meet them, you realize they're not like that. Wow. It, it's, yep. it's such a letdown, and, and wow. it can become discouraging mm -hmm. as you navigate through the journey. Yeah. Um, but you know, we're doing what we can. So. Wow. So, what are the ins and outs in the music um, world? As far as what? What would you say are the hardest? Yeah. What would you say are the for artists out there? I think I what think would be the um, I think the the number one problem with the artists in twenty nineteen is that they're basically making music for people that don't buy music. Mm -hmm. So you're essentially creating a business and a product that no one is buying, mm -hmm. and the reason why they're not buying it is because it only displays one emotion. So you're targeting an audience. Mm -hmm with one emotion and there's nothing relatable, hmm. right? Hmm. So there's there's a reason why Nas goes number one, and you know, he, mm -hmm. he uh, um, just this, this many, like uh, I use Griselda Records as a perfect example. There's these mm -hmm. guys, West Side Gun, Benny the Butcher, and Conway the Machine, you probably never heard of them, these guys are selling out arenas. <laughs> they're selling out arenas and it's, it's nice. about the relatability because they're marketing to an audience that's used to physically buying an album. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. The, the market is there, you just have to attack it. Yeah. But the general concept and what the idea um, kind of drawn down between friends and DJs mm -hmm. is this is not what you're supposed to do, but these guys are suffering. Wow. You know, there's no reason why, you know, a French Montana only sells 80,000 copies in his first week. I mean, we come from the era where people were going platinum, which is a million copies, you know. Yes. Um, and then finally, you know, not, not just ramble on with them, but um, mm -hmm, no. artists not understanding the business yeah. in general. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they they have this mindset that it's like, I just want to rap. <laughs> yeah. I want to rap. I want to do nothing yeah. else. Yeah. Wow. And then they wonder why they end up in three sixty deals and they publish and take in because nobody's gonna take care of you like you. So you gotta take the initiative. Wow. Yeah, so, so what do you think about, I know that, you know, you talked about the label. What do you think about everybody is kind of going independent right now? They're kind of scared to go to a label. What is your take on that, uh, the label versus being independent? I mean, you, you technically don't need a label now. Mm. Um, again, with the way information is is, uh, is passed on, you can actually make a solid um, career for yourself. Being independent, it's also about kind of having realistic expectations. Okay. You know, everybody okay. wants to be Drake and Nicki Minaj out of the gate. Let's worry about paying our mortgage off of music first. <laughs> That's good. Let's That's worry good. about them paying your car note. And then mm -hmm. once you get comfortable, then you can wow. develop going wow. to the next level. Yeah, they just, that. They trying and to just jump. shoot for the stars, like, off the rip. And it's, yeah. it doesn't work like that, unfortunately. Wow. You gotta walk before you can run. Yes. 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 And wait a minute, I'ma there. So give the example of an artist saying in one emotion. Um, I mean the typical trap. I hate it. I don't want to just categorize it mm -hmm. because it, it it is a little unfair. Mm -hmm. Because in all honesty, there are some trap artists 
that make general music, a uh, wife and Lucci's one, T.I., Two Chains. There are some, but you know, the randoms, little and young of the world. Yeah. It's kind of like they're just making this music that displays one emotion, and mm -hmm. it's about club and turn up. The okay. majority of the okay. world does not turn up and go to the club. So mm -hmm. you're putting yourself in a box unnecessarily because you assume this is what it is. Mm -hmm. okay. When you can be reaching a, a, um, a variety of people mm -hmm. and, and potentially you. bring yourself okay. back a lot more yeah. revenue by trying to relate. Like, I want to know about baby mama drama. I want to know that you're behind in <laughs> your rent. I want to know that your, your kid is cut in school. Like, we want to know this because we can relate to it and that creates the connection where your your um, stream will turn into a sale. Wow. And there's a big difference like in the stream that. and the sale because every stream you get is 0, 0.18 cents. So you basically you need, need, a you need a million, you need a million streams. To work on you need a million streams to make $1,800. You need 100 million streams to make $180,000 because you're focusing on streams instead of focusing on sales. So mm. if, you, if, you, if you focus okay. more on the sale aspect, every time you get streamed, that could equivalent into $7 for you okay. if you just focus on people buying the product. As opposed to streaming the product. Wow, he have did his wow. own work for this. I'm so, do you think this. coming wow. from New York and then the music in New York and the music here in Atlanta is kind of different? So, do you think is it hard? I think to at, try to fit in. No, I think at, I think at this point, um, it's the same. Me personally, I'm highly disappointed in my city um, because my city no longer has an identity. Mm. Um, when 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 an artist from the West Coast comes on, you know he's from the West Coast as soon as the instrumentation hits. When a Tiger record hits, when an Ice Cube record hits, when yeah. a Nipsey, you know they're from the West Coast. When an artist from Atlanta, the Gunners of the world, the Little Babies of the world, you know they're from yeah. Atlanta. When yeah. when a Miami artist, City Girls, you know they're from Miami. When a New York record hits, you don't know where they're from. <laughs> You from Texas? And they used to be they able to, though. That's where it, you it from? out there. Is you better move here right now. They have heard you. <laughs> where you from? I don't okay. know where you from. Really? I don't know where you from. Are you yeah. from Harlem or are you from Beckett? Like, where you from? I don't, I, I, that's because everybody's I trying never, to be, okay. like, the wave. That's what it is. We're losing that. Because I remember at one time, like, New York, the music coming from New York or from up north, you could tell instantly. Yeah. He's right. You could tell. Yeah, there's a dance to it and everything. Know. You can't know. And a lot of that has to do with the record labels not wanting to pay you. So them them strategically mm -hmm. dumbing down the records. Like, oh, you can't man. really. Wow. You know, we, wow. we can't act like this is not what's going on, you know. And they is it true that they kind of lose themselves, artists, when they sign to a label? Because then they want you to do this type of music only. Or, I mean, not necessarily because whenever you get a, whenever you get a, uh, whenever you get a, a deal, you're getting money, and the label has to be able to recoup their money. So you have to make the best music possible. You, artists put themselves in a box because they just want to be a rapper and nothing else. Wow. As long as they're a rapper. Yeah. Wow. For oh the fame. Goodness. For the fame. That's this what it is. This is awesome. He just didn't educated us. Okay. Know, we just got an ear for it's a lot. lot of learning. So you can day. keep rewinding and rewinding because you got to get every piece of what he said yes. because he's speaking truth. Yes. Definitely. So I love saying that name. Let him just have that name. Okay. <laughs> All right. You call him Amadeus. Okay. I'm going to call him Imp. <laughs> okay. okay, and together we got it. We yeah. got the full thing. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, where can all our viewers and listeners find you at on all your social media uh, outlets? That infamous Amadeus day is everywhere. That's um, everywhere, and then, uh, of course, uh, tune in to me on Shay Forty Five on uh, Thursday at three p.m. Uh, okay, so how do you spell it? How do you spell the, the info? It's long. Ah, D A D A infamous Amadeus. I N. P A H A U S. There we go. A A D E U Z. Wow, we are so excited. We are honored to even have you on Amadeus. We've been waiting for this for a long time. Me and Ray, we were keeping up. We was like, wait a minute. He, wait a minute, Ray. Is he coming this week? Ray, like, no, next week. So we <laughs> yeah, we're ready. And I'm here yes. for the whole week. So if you're in Atlanta, um, definitely oh. lock in with me. Yeah, um, hear that? We're, we're gonna we're gonna be out here, and I'm gonna be looking for talent. I've already brought two kids back from Atlanta to New York. Hey! Right. And where will you be? Won't you tell them real quick oh where you'll be this week? Today we have Island, tomorrow we have Smith Hall Bar, 
Um, I, I'm doing the main stage of A3C okay. on Saturday. Okay. Crazy. I mean, there's a that lot going cool. on. So, and you got Rip okay, the okay. Mic with AJ yeah. and oh, and shout AJ. Out to AJ yes. Uh, after a AJ. He, uh, he, he definitely pulled the strategic business move and said, listen, I'm getting him for the whole lockdown. For Get him out of here. So, yeah. Yo, he's, he's locking out of too. <laughs> I'm with him yes. right now. So, so y'all right. gotta follow your boy, okay? He's doing great things. Follow him. He's and here. Yes. Until next Tuesday. And yes. if you want your yeah. music and you Ooh. want that interview, they can get their interview with yes. you in New York. Yes. Right? Yes. So yeah. he is looking for talent, you guys. Yeah. And also, you guys, hey, you see this um, shirt? I got, well, it's not a shirt, but it's just like a cover up. So you guys need to go to Charlie's Glam, Glam Boutique. Mm -hmm. She have awesome prices, yes, you guys, right in Cobb County. She is doing her thing. She is open Monday through Sunday. She have chosen to dress your girls. So we're definitely going to have a lot that you guys can um, purchase. Go right now. Charlie's Glam Boutique, you guys. On Instagram. Oh, yes, Instagram. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, and Charlie Bobby. and Bobby. <laughs> and you guys, don't forget to tune in every Tuesday at WorldStarHitRadio.com. At 8.30 p.m. Yes. And follow your girls on Let's Get Personal with Atlanta on Instagram. Let's Get Personal with Latanya and Ray on YouTube and Facebook. Make sure yes. you subscribe. Yes. Well, we are so happy. We yes. love you. Thank you. Welcome to Atlanta and you're coming back. Yes. I'm We're going to follow him, what he's doing. Yes. And you guys, you want to show with your girls? DM us on Instagram. Let's get personal Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Woody woo. <laughs> love you guys. Till next time. Bye. <laughs>